It was a beautiful day. The sun beat down. I had a radio on. I was driving. Trees went by. Me and Del were singing. A little runaway. I was flying. Mm, yeah, running down a dream. Thought it would come to me. Working on a mystery. Going wherever it leads. Running down a dream. Woohoo! Woohoo! <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> oh man, barely made it through that one. Guys, thank you, thank you, thank you for joining us today on the Silver 5150 channel. Hanging out with some copper and paying tribute to the great Tom Petty. Good old Tom Petty, man. Traveling Willowberries, uh, Heartbreakers. He died last year. We're going to miss him. All right, so um, we are going to talk copper today. We're going to talk about why you should stack it, why it's important, and all that stuff. Um, yeah, when we get back, we're going to look at all these coins. We're going to talk about them, stuff like that. And we're going to have some fun dealing with ways to invest in copper. But first, a word from our sponsor. Hi, this is Expat Stacker of Expat Global. I'm here in beautiful Pusan, South Korea, at an undisclosed location where in a few days we'll make history with our patented Hydron AG propulsion system. Working with our in-house alternative energy department, Alloy Development Group, and the brilliant minds of the faculty of our Institute for Advanced Chemical Development, we are determined to secure a contract with JSS Airways and take their Beluga-class passenger transports supersonic. Reactionless aerogels, high-speed algal wind river avionics packages, and Hydromax molecular fuels are but a few of our in-house products that will make this possible. But don't take our word for it. Book a maiden flight on one of JSS's Beluga SSTs today. At Expat Global, we are always moving forward because the future is still on its way. Expat Global. Hey, all right, we are back. We are back here on the Silver 5150 channel. That Expat Global, man, I tell you, I can't wait to get into one of those uh, Beluga transports at JSS. I hear they have hot tubs on those. Can you believe that? Hot tubs on aircraft. Awesome. Anyway, today we've got some quarter ounce copper. We've got some one ounce copper. And I'm going to try to explain the case to you guys that copper is a great investment. We've done this before, but now I'm going to make a new case to prove that copper is a great investment. It's a base metal. Copper is a base metal, and it's way more important than people know. I'm going to go back to the Bible on you. I'm going to go back to the Bible on you. Bitcoin. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, anyway, so Jesus tells us at one point he sat down opposite the place where the offerings were being put in a temple and watched the crowd putting their money into the temple treasury. Many rich people threw in large amounts, but a poor widow came along and put in two very small copper coins worth only a few cents. Calling his disciples to him, Jesus said, Truly I tell you, this poor widow has put more into the treasury than all the others. They all gave out of their wealth, but she, out of her poverty, put in everything she had to live on. And that is from Mark chapter 12, verses 41 through 44. Okay, so two small copper coins from the widow um, tells you that Jesus accepted copper as money. So if the Lord's accepting copper as money, I'm accepting the copper as money, especially when it's in conjunction with gold and silver, which I think is all going to be part of the new paradigm of money. All right. So, by the way, did you know, remember that uh, eagle I had this morning, <laughs> that St. Gaudens? Did you know a real uh, gold eagle, a real gold eagle actually has about 5% copper in it? And it has some silver, too. I think it's probably 3% silver. But 5% copper and then the rest of the eagle, the gold eagle, which actually has a tan compared to its sovereign sisters. Notice how the American gold eagle is a little bit darker, right? Yeah. Yeah. Got a little sister in that sister, right? Um, <laughs> the American gold eagle does have 5% uh, copper in it. Um, it does not diminish the coin. It still has one full ounce of 3.9 uh, silver, 3.9 is gold. But um, it has that copper in it. So copper does matter, and it does uh, go a long way as far as making other metals stronger, especially the precious metals, um, when we coin them. All right, let's see what else we got here. 
So, if you think you're not invested in copper and you have those gold eagles, by the way, you are invested in copper. Just wanted to put that out there. <laughs> okay, so if copper is not that important, why are so many things copper plated or copper coated? Why not just make everything completely out of copper if it's so abundant, right? I mean, honestly, you know, copper is not precious, but it's got to be kind of precious, all right? I'm going to buy a lot of copper. And if I have any extra left over, I'm going to probably use it to decorate my coastal home. Maybe a coastal home. I'll have more than one, but maybe the one in Busan, South Korea. I'll just outfit my entire kitchen with it. Maybe some bathroom appointments with it. It looks really good once it starts to get that uh, corrosion on it. It gets a little seafoam green going there. And so that is, uh, that is pretty good. All right. But I'm going to tell you something. Um, even though copper is being used in conjunction with gold and silver um, in some of the coins and stuff like that. It's actually going to have to be used along with gold and silver to absorb all of the incredible amount of debt that we have in the system, guys. I am not joking. I, You know, I'm going to tell you, okay, you know what? Tomorrow I'm going to do a show. And all we're going to talk about is how much debt is really out there around the globe. I know how much there is because I've been following it for years. All right. It has been blowing my mind because I've been finding like hidden enclaves, enclaves of debt in various places and countries that have been doing things behind the scenes and unofficial records and all this stuff. And when you find out just how much actual monetary debt is out there, okay, let's get in close to one of these buffaloes here. Um, it's going to blow your mind. It really is. I always say it's going to blow your mind. It's going to blow your mind. Well, the, num the numbers I'm going to show you tomorrow on the debt is going to blow your mind. And I'm going to show you also how it's going to end up funneling into our assets, be it these, be it silver or gold. All right. So, um, we'll do that tomorrow, but for now, we're going to go ahead and get into the investment side of things, into the psychology side of things, okay? So what do you have? When you have copper coins, you have a handful of different categories, okay? So we're going to start with regular copper coins, and regular copper coins are going to be you know, coins like this Bitcoin coin, the one like I had this morning, the St. Gaudens uh, mock-up, all right? And these can be found usually for around 99 cents, and they're at all the dealers, okay? And in fact, a lot of coins that um, are out there you know, can be found anywhere between, you know, 99 cents and maybe $1.49. But I know that now we now we ride, one of the uh, subscribers I have, um, they found the um, 69 cent copper coin that's stamped second at Golden State Mint. And so that's the thing right there. So you have a coin like this at Golden State Mint, and it's obviously secondary market. They bring them in and they actually stamp them with a red second, 2ND, to let you know that there's secondary market. You know, it's copper. Who cares? But you can buy that. You can get those if you buy them in volume for 69 cents. So I think that's pretty cool. Let's go ahead and flip this over so you can take a look at it. And I think it goes like this. So, yes, it's a uh, it's protect the future. It's uh, what's it say here? I have no idea. I thought it said bullion, not bets, but it doesn't say that. It says on this side over here. Anyway, so... Um, we have the regular 99 cent copper coins. If you buy them in volume, sometimes you can get a little bit lower, you know, 73 cents, 79 cents, 83 cents um, if you buy high volume and stuff. And so those are the regular copper coins that we always talk about. Um, and then there are the high dollar value coins. These are the premium copper coins. All right. And they run anywhere from three to twelve dollars. You'll find them. They'll be like the Norse God series or they'll be like some kind of. Um, really, really high level series, you know, um, it'll be in a box, you'll get a copper, you know, rounded box, and it'll be commemorative or something like that. And so um, those will be the, uh, those will be the premium copper coins. And they will run, you know, like I said, three to $12. And let's not forget about the five ounce copper coins and copper bars. It's all like, like the same thing. But the larger the copper coins get, strangely enough, the more they cost per coin. And then underneath an ounce, if you try to get, say, four of these, which these are quarter ounce um, copper, by the way. These are quarter ounce copper. And you're like, silver 5150, why do you have quarter ounce copper? Well, I have quarter ounce copper because I think that copper is going to be money. Doesn't it look like money? It looks it look like money, right? Let's go ahead and put that around. There, get that. Make it look more official. That looks like money. I'm sorry. Ah! <laughs> Eagle. All right, it looks like money. And so I'm telling you right now, they have their place. And people, why would they go through all this trouble to mint these and make, you know, make these great, great replicas if it wasn't going to be intended as money at some point, somehow, some way? I just, I, I can't, I can't ignore that. Okay. So we've dealt with that. We've dealt with the regular coins. We've dealt with the premium copper coins, right? So now we're going to get into the copper sleepers, okay? 
we're going to call these the sleeper copper coins, okay? And among these sleepers right here are this one here. And these, these are from Provident, okay? Aztec Dragon is part of the um, World of the Dragon series. It was the very first one out of the World of the Dragon series out of Provident. Can't get these now. These are the Horseman series. And that is the Pale Horse of Death, the most popular of the uh, Pale of the, the Horsemen, okay? And that was out of Provident too. And thank God the broker was on his game and he got me these copper coins. Then later on, I picked up on what was going on and I got these copper coins too. Now, these are back in 2017. I think these came out, or 2018. Anyway, so these were sleeper coins because you were able to get these for 99 cents when they came out. But Provident, they never mentioned what the mintages were. Now, if you look at some of these retailers out there, you can see like historically, historically they've had copper coins in their inventories and you see they've been out of stock for years because they've like Norse God series or they'd be like the Rockstar series or you know something that was you know very um, cultural or seminal and um, you know iconic and so they make those copper coins and people say copper ah who's got time you know because it's all about the gold and silver right well let me tell you guys a little something about investing and the copper sleepers alright I'm gonna do something here I haven't tried before let's hope it works all right, so we have the Aztec coin here, right? This is a printout from the computer, and it is from Amazon, okay? And on Amazon, these coins, where this is the only place I see you can get them, by the way. Um, I think you might be able to get them on eBay. On eBay, they might be a little bit less, but this guy here, he's got them. And now if you want to get these copper coins, these copper rounds, I keep calling them coins, they're rounds. Um, he wants $15 for these things. But it's okay because you get free shipping. Um, okay. Ouch. And then he's got some other ones down here too. But these Aztec rounds that I got for 99 cents, okay, that are now um, unavailable at any of the retailers, you can get online for many, many dollars more. And okay, so let's say it's just half that. Say that you can get the coins for $7.50. Okay, what just happened? I had an investment that I had in my hands for, it doesn't matter what the investment is. Volume is what matters. Remember in one of my videos or a lot of my videos, I say volume is what matters. Because say for instance, that I took the money that I had spent um, on a lot of silver and bought every single copper coin, they, copper round, this dragon round they had. Okay, just for the record, they meant to 25,000 of these, but nobody knew that. So say for instance, I spent $25,000 on these copper rounds instead of buying, say, two monster boxes in some 10-ounce bars for $22,000, $25,000. I would have these, coin, have these rounds, $25,000, and the price would be available on retail. I, I could go on retail and sell them, undersell this guy, undersell the other guys, for $7. What happens? I am able to increase my money by seven times because these coins have appreciated in terms of the retail market seven times. So that's seven times $25,000. That's a $175,000 return or $150,000 return on $25,000. Did, did all that make sense? These copper coins, they revalued seven times. And the reason is, is because everybody has a clear spot price to go with on gold. Everybody has a clear spot price to go with on silver, even on oil. But on copper, there is no real clear spot price. They give you a spot price by the pound, okay? And that is, you know, um, you know, mined copper. It's not investable grade. This is investable grade copper that has been minted, okay, and, and weighed and marked and all that stuff. So the markup on this is considerably higher because, in all honesty, an ounce of copper is probably 25 cents. Strike price is, you know, uh, strike is 50 cents, and then they put, a, put 25 cents on it to make some extra money, you know, for doing it. But then when you get into the retail market, what we know and what the retailer knows, the regular buyer does not know. They're not aware about this for copper. They're not aware that copper can be marked up, you know, that much. All they know is, okay, and here we go into the buyer psychology. Buyer psychology says, well, I could get uh, a silver coin from this guy for $25, or I can get this nice copper round that looks very cool. And in fact, it's just like the dragon, coin, dragon round I just saw out of silver, and I can get it for only seven dollars i think i'm just gonna get the copper one because i'm gonna save like 13 dollars or you know 22 dollars so they go and they buy the copper round because the price point is more agreeable to their budget people some people operate strictly on budget just strictly on budget 
okay? And so they are more comfortable buying something that's lower cost, even though it's not quite as nice, but still has the same impact. And this does, it has the same impact as a silver coin. And in fact, I think it has a little more impact because the metal's darker and it accents the details better. But um, I hope I made my point about psychology there. By psychology. People see something, you know, that's shiny and nice and, you know, it's kind of related to something that's shiny and nice and precious. And they go, hmm, okay. You know, I'll try it. Especially if I don't have the money to get the, you know, the silver thing or the gold thing. I'll get some copper stuff. All right? But we buy copper for a different reason because we think it's actually going to be used in the monetary system come up. But people will buy them just because they're cool and maybe want to give them for gifts. And I know some of you guys have done as much. But I'm talking about the idea of becoming savvy at shopping for sleeper copper rounds and then flipping them for profit. And that's something I'm sure a lot of you uh, experienced stackers, you know, could probably agree on. Now, I don't know if you can still get these, but I know you cannot get these. And by the way, you certainly can't get these. These are the Horseman series, and these are hotter than hell when it comes to um, desirability. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to go to our advanced imaging system, <laughs> right? The printout. And as you can see, we've got the Rider Famine, who is not the Rider Death, which is more popular, but we're just going to take a less popular Rider. And we're going to see that Jim's Pro Shop wants $14.50 for this coin as well. But it's okay because it's free shipping, right? I paid $0.99 cent for this coin. I've got four of them. I got each horseman. And I could possibly get on eBay or get on to Amazon and sell these things for $10 a piece. So that is a 1,000% profit on copper. See, that's the great thing about copper. It's priced so low at its entry point that it leaves all kinds of upward movement for 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 profit, okay? It, it does. If you know how to work it, how to time it, what to buy, how to sell it, all that stuff, you could literally make a living on stacking copper because you know what to buy and when to sell it. You don't even have to do silver or gold, especially if you're working in the now right now. But even later on when the spot price of copper starts going up, and then these collectibles play into that, we're probably going to see even greater price points in this, in copper. So my point is this, and we were talking about this, me and Silver Joker were talking about this uh, with another, uh, one of his subscribers. You know, he's saying like these challenges and stuff, that's not cool because, you know, a lot of people can't afford to barely, you know, um, pay attention. And we get that. We get that. But I'm telling you, you don't have to be out of the game. You could, cop you could stack copper and hang with us, and if you start to educate yourself and learn, you know, how to do it right, man, you can really, really start to clean the house. Now, the trick is going to be using these methods that I was talking about earlier to find the right kind of sleeper coins. You want to find co coins, rounds. You want to find rounds that are attached to a theme that is really popular, or B, is associated with a theme that also has silver or gold, or both versions of it as well. In this particular case of the Aztec coin and in the case of the horse, horseman uh, um, rounds, oh gosh, I'm really having a hard time with that today. Um, these were both part of a series that came in copper and in silver, okay? So that was very helpful. And the broker saw that and then I saw it later. Um, I think the World of Dragons may be out right now. Um, I think they did the last dragon, it was the sixth dragon. I thought they were gonna do like 12. I don't know, I hope I'm wrong. But there's going to be more series that are going to come out. And for whatever reason, Provident has the most success at some of these things going ballistic. All right? So keep in mind on that. Um, you can buy, you know, cop uh, copper coins that, uh, copper rounds that are more ornate. But you're going to end up paying a premium for them. And then the turnaround probably won't be as great. But, you know, it's just a matter of learning how to flip them. Okay? So I hope I covered all that today. All right? Um, you can buy copper at a very low price point and even sell the regular stuff, you know, two, three, four dollars. If you spend a thousand dollars on copper, get yourself a thousand copper rounds, and then start to piece them off in the market, you put that out, you put these out in the global market on Amazon or eBay or Craigslist or whatever, somebody's gonna pick them up for two, three dollars because again, the entry price point for them is very agreeable. They don't know that you paid 99 cents for it. They just know that, you know, it's a very nice shiny coin. And it's in a capsule. The capsule was 50 cents. The coin <laughs> was a dollar. You put the capsule on it, now you can charge four or five dollars for it. You see what I'm getting at? So you don't have to be at the top of the pops to stack. You don't you don't have to be, you know, up here with us big stackers or us big silver stackers or like the gold stackers and stuff like that. You can come right down here and hang out with copper, turn enough profits to then roll over into silver or gold, what have you. But the case for copper being at such a low entry point and being able to be resold or to continue to grow in retail value 
is the same principles that apply to silver. Relative to gold, silver is priced so low that it actually leaves a lot of upward movement for profit. But even silver is no comparison to copper if you know how to play the game. So that's what I would ask you. I would ask you to just, you know, look, educate yourself, all right? Educate yourself. We've got this copper here, man, and every retailer's got it. Just look around and see what looks cool. If you got an eye for art, use your eye for art. Find something like, you know what? That's going to look cool. And I'll give you an example of what I'm talking about. Now, um, Teenage Stacker uh, um, there out of Canada, he's got a roll, I think, of copper pandas he picked up from Provident. And guess what's sitting at Provident right now? To go into the copper section, tucked way back in the back of the inventory, are these copper panda rounds where the mama's holding the baby, the theme from 2019, and you can get as many as you want for like 99 cents or maybe a little bit more. But if you get the volume pricing, you can get them for 99 cents. Look at them. Check them out. They're a panda theme. Panda themes don't do bad. And it's only a matter of time. What's going to make these things trigger, what's going to trigger these panda rounds, these copper rounds, is when they're unavailable. It's the principle of unobtainium and unaffordium. Once a coin becomes unobtainium because you can't get it, it works its way towards unaffordium because now its unavailability makes it expensive. Okay? You want to be the people that can take advantage of that. You want to be the people to take advantage of that. So if you're a low, 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 low budget individual, and there's no shame in that because we've all been there, and you want to get into the game, you can slide in the back door using copper. But you do need to educate yourself. They got it right here. They've got it for you to buy. It's very easy to buy. 18 carats. This is 18 karat copper. Okay? It's refined copper. All right? 18 carats. It's weighed, and it's ready to go. All right? Allows you to come in at the lowest income level and join the stack attack. All right? But educate yourself. And keep tuning into the stacker channels that are going to show you, you know, um, some cool things that come up or lead you to places where some cool copper might come up. All right? So thank you guys for joining me today. I'm Fit Silver 5150 telling you that your stack is not whack. All right, and that just four ounces of silver to your name keeps you 99 cent ahead of the game. I hope I made the case again for buying copper, guys, because I'm actually excited. I got myself excited. I'm gonna go and I'm gonna buy some tonight because I can afford to buy some of that. I couldn't afford none of those dimes, those silver dimes at Money Metals Exchange, but I can certainly afford some of these. I don't know. I don't have any money. I'm not gonna do it, and I've got plenty of copper anyway. So if you guys want to see more of this copper and stuff, give me a thumbs up, like, share, subscribe as always, um, and comment on your thoughts about copper um if you wish okay and um and i do have plenty more to show off if you'd like to see that okay so i'm gonna head out but i'll catch you the morning at the in the morning at the uh, update tomorrow okay so be good in the hood and uh look at getting some copper man check into it tell me what you find and i'll talk to you later